Hi there, if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And if that sounds good to you, think about hitting that subscribe button so you can get videos like this every single week. Now, you can see here on the screen, we're gonna be doing some fun things with animating gradients and some things that people don't even know that you can do. So I think this is not necessarily the best use case for some of these things to be honest with you, but we're gonna look at three different things you can do. We're gonna look at a button, how we can do it on the background, and of course the text that you see uh, going on right now. Also, if you've been following me for a while, you know I haven't, I actually missed a video last week, which very rarely happens, and it's because I've been super, super busy with something that I'm super excited to let you all know about, so I have an announcement for that at the end of the video as well, so stick around for that. So enough talk about all that stuff, let's jump into it and do some fun stuff with gradients. All right, so here we are in VS Code. I've just set up this really basic thing. I'm not too much going on here. And I'm going to jump over to my uh, CSS file here. Now, I'm not actually going to be writing SCSS. We'll be writing regular CSS. It's just with how I have my build set up, uh, it's easier for me to do it this way. So we're going to start off with our button. And what I've done is I've called that button dot fun. So on here, well, we don't have anything on here, right? So uh, with a button, there's always a lot of stuff to do. So first of all, I don't want to border on it anymore. So we'll get rid of that. We'll change the padding on it a little bit. Uh, let's do say 0.5 M on the top and bottom 1.5 M on the left and the right. And let's just increase the font size to two rem or something. So this whole thing looks a little better. So it's starting to come together. Um, now, so if you're not familiar with gradients, gradients are background images. And this is a little weird, but it actually is good for us. So we can do a linear gradient, which will be right to left or something like that. So I can do something like red, blue, and well, I'll get a gradient on there. And I can choose the direction here in degrees or in the direction. So I can say like to right, and then it'll move toward the right. Or I can say 45 degrees, and then the angle of it will be 45 degrees that way. Um, so that's cool. Now, what I've done, though, is I've wanted something a bit more colorful than just a basic gradient like this. So I've gone and created a gradient here because we're going to reuse the same one. So you can see it goes through a whole bunch of colors. Um, a few of these stops might be a little bit much, but I wanted to make sure we had a nice color range going in there. Um, I put them all on just separate lines to make it easier to read, and it's at 45 degrees. But of course, you know, we could have, I could have had everything on one line. I just wanted to, you know, it's, it's a bit easier to see, or if I wanted to change one color, it makes my life a little bit easier. Um, if you don't know about custom variables, I do have a mini series on that. I think it's six videos actually where we dive pretty deep into the awesome stuff you can do with them. So there should be a card for that up on the screen right now. Um, so I'm going to switch out my linear gradient here with my gradient. So now we should see that gradient come in there. Uh, one thing we can't do, and actually let's get to the can't first. So it's fun hover. What we can't do is change, or we can't, let's do background image. Uh, I'll just do a, a linear gradient of red, blue. So if I do that, obviously, if I come and hover, like it's going to switch between them. But what we cannot do, because it is a background image, is we can't transition it. Transition background image one second. And that's not going to work. Background images are one of the few uh, properties that can't be transitioned because it's an image and CSS would have trouble transitioning an image. So that goes out. So, well, what are we supposed to do then? Well, luckily, because it is a background image, we do have a background position property. And background position is something that you can transition. So that opens up some possibilities. But before we can really play with the position of it, what I'm going to do is first make the size really big. So I'm going to say it's like 300%. And now if I do that, we're going to see that I only have the first couple of colors because the other ones are spilling off the side. They're overflowing, but because it's a background, we don't see them. They're hiding over here outside of my button. And if I play with my background position now, so if I say it is right, uh, now I see the right side of it, and we can go back to left over there. So I think you see where I'm going with this. What I can do is take this background position on hover, and let's do hover and focus. Just so, yeah, we're being good there. And this will be on the right. So if we do that, now when I go on top, or I have a focus on there, so I can tab on top of it and it switches, we can see that it does change. Now the advantage with this is, if I wanna do a transition now, we can. So I can transition my background position, say over one second. It's pretty slow, but now you get this cool slide in. You know, it looks like it's changing, but it's like this gradient change. So I think that's really awesome. I love being able to do something like that. Uh, maybe it's a bit of a strange use case in there. We can tab on also and tab off. So 
I think that's pretty cool that we can do something like that. I forgot on here. It's a button, so we should also have our cursor pointer on there. Um, just so it looks like we can actually click on it. So there we go. Um, so I like doing that. I think that's kind of fun. But um, as I had a video not too long about five cool CSS uh, hover effects that we can do, and people pointed out to me that, well, so many people are mobile that, you know, that's not always something that we need to worry about so much these days. And I guess you're right. So let's look at a couple of other ways that we can play around with this. And we're going to start with doing our big background over here. So I'm actually going to turn off that button for now because Oh, we can leave it there, I guess. So I'm going to come up to my body here and let's set up my background image to be my var gradient. And there we go. We have my nice gradient there and it looks very nice, but we're not done yet. We're going to do the same as before with our background size of say 300 or maybe 400%, whatever we want. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to make an animation so we can do a simple one with at keyframes space, and then the animation name. So we'll call it uh, BG animation. And now we can do it. So I'm going to say starting at zero percent into my animation, my background position will be left, which is the default. So we're just staying exactly where we were. And then at 100%, we can do our background position. Well, you got to spell it right position is going to go to right. And then we can bring that in. So now I can say that I have an animation of BG animation, because that's the animation we want to use. And let's say five seconds infinite. There will be a small mistake or a small problem with this, but uh, you can see right now, look at that. It's working. My, my background is slowly switching, but you just saw there, that's the problem where it just sort of clicks through. So one option is to make this the 50% and then have it go back to here at 100%. But if we want to fix that from happening, all we have to do is put in alternate. And what alternate means is once you run forwards, then the second time it will run backwards. So if we update that, it's starting over now. So now it should move one direction and then slowly move back in the other direction. Look at that. Super nice. Now I've set this to five seconds. So, and my color difference is really, really obvious, but I could obviously slow this down. I could run it over 20 seconds instead, or if you had a very small shift in color, um, it could end up being just this like nice subtle effect that you could throw on there. Now, I wouldn't use this on very many sites, but for very specific situations or setting a mood on something very specific, I guess it could be something cool and something fun to do. We just get this slight shifting going on. And I think the more subtle you make it, the more impactful it actually is. When if it's moving fast, people are just not going to like it. You need to make this like right now it's running super slowly. I really think that's the right way to go. So you can see like they'll notice it because all of a sudden it's like, oh, the colors are different. Um, so you can definitely do it, make it noticeable, but it's don't overdo it. Don't make it run too fast because that's just going to cause people to have headaches and not enjoy your site. <laughs> and so I'm going to turn off this, this hover, the button here, because it's bothering me. I said I would before I didn't, but now <laughs> I will. Um, because I want to focus on the title and we're going to make the title bigger for this one too, because I think it's not big enough for what we want to do. So do I have a font size? We have three RAM. I'm going to make it like six. Let's make a big title. And for this, I'm going to add a background to this title. And I, a lot of people don't, I'm going to add a gradient to my text. And a lot of people don't even know you can do this. So this is cool um, where I'm going to put this just a little further down here. So I'm going to put in on this a background image. You guess what I'm going to put on this background image. Uh, you can guess I'm going to do my var gradient and I'm going to save and we're going to see that, well, it's a background. So yeah, clearly that's what's happening, right? But did you know there is a background clip and background clip lets us clip to different things. It can be the border box, the content box, the padding box, um, but you can also clip it to our text. And now we can't see it. Why can't we see it? Because our background is clipped to our text and our text is blocking it. There is another property for this, but I find the easiest thing to do, uh, just do color of my text is transparent and I'll save and look at that. It's a gradient text. I love that. I think that looks really cool uh, just to begin with. Um, so you could do this as a hover. Um, you know, I've played with it on a hover. I don't really want to put it as a hover effect, I guess, because on a link, you wouldn't want to do this. It needs to be something bold and really fat and probably a big size. So if it, if you did it, maybe there's some situations where you could come up with a, a cool want for a hover effect on the text like this. So I think instead of using a hover, I'm going to do an animation. Now, just don't forget, if you're going to do this, you do need to boost the background size up. So background size, we'll do 400% again. 
very new. It could be 300%. It could be different sizes, but we just need to be bigger than what we have uh, than the element itself, because then it's going to spill out the sides or, or be hidden outside of that element. And then in this case, we'll bring our animation back in. We called it BG animation. Let's do like five seconds just so we can see it a bit quicker, quicker, quacker, quicker. Um, and five seconds and uh, infinite alternate. Alternate. Awesome. And let's hit save and let's see. There you go. Now my text is also animating. So now uh, now I wouldn't do this where we have two things going. I think it's a little bit uh, too much. It's actually bothering me a little bit. So let's turn off this one um, just so that one's not moving, just so we can see this one moving. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. So you can see that it is sort of shifting through different colors. Um, I don't know if I would use it on text like this, but I thought it'd be fun to look at it. Just doing a gradient in text is kind of cool and it is fun. So this maybe isn't a best practice video, but it is something, you know, the fun stuff of CSS. And one of the reasons I love CSS is how you can find the things like this. And that sort of leads nicely into the announcement that I wanted to tell you about that I'm super excited about. And if you follow my newsletter, which if you're not yet subscribed to, you can go down and uh, find the link for that in the description. But, um, over there I have talked about it and what it is is I'm doing a course with a scrimba and this course is something that a lot of people have been asking me about and it is a complete course on how to build responsive websites. It's starting from assuming you know pretty much nothing and it's going to go all the way up into using Flexbox and Grid to make responsive websites. You also know me, I like playing with CSS so it's going to go into, there's like a whole section of it just devoted to making things look a little nicer too and it's not just about making responsive websites but it's also about my thought process when I'm looking at designs. So I'm like how I look at a design and just make my decisions before I start writing any code, how I'm planning out things and breaking things down as much as possible, because that's often one of the hardest things to do before you start doing anything. And it's a very hands-on, it's project-based. I really believe in project-based learning. And it's not just like, here's all the Flexbox properties. Now let's go and test them out. Um, it's really... Let's just start getting our feet wet with Flexbox and doing a little bit with it and then building on top of that. And then, okay, now that we've used it for a while and we understand it, let's really understand Flexbox. And then let's do the same thing with Grid. Let's see Grid, let's use Grid, let's make a responsive website with Grid. Okay, that's cool. We've touched on some of the stuff. Let's really dive into it now and fully understand it. And it's going, again, from the very basics, assuming you haven't done a whole lot. So it's not even starting about responsiveness. It's just starting to make sure you understand the fundamentals of CSS really well. And then it's going to expand out from there. If this sounds really awesome, it's going to be launching very soon. There is a link in the description right now. And if you click on that link, it will bring you to a little sign up form. So you can be one of the very first people to know when the course actually launches. It should be in about two weeks from now. I'm super excited about it. So if that sounds awesome to you and you're also excited about it, go and sign up for the updates there so you know exactly what's going on. I'm also going to share some projects and just keep you up to date before the course launches as well. You know everything that's going to be in there and you're and you will know exactly when it launches. I'm so excited about this. But that's enough about that. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much. If you learned anything about this, if you came across something cool here that you think you could use, if you've ever done cool stuff with gradients, leave links down in the description. Sometimes YouTube does uh, flag those as spam, but I'll try and pay attention to that and on flag stuff that shouldn't be in there. And also, did you know I have a community? I have a Discord channel. There's a link to that. And I have lots of links in the description, but there's a link to that in the description as well. And if you come in there, if you're new to CSS, it, if you're new to front end development and you just have questions you want to ask and you don't know who to ask, it's a great place to go. If you're experienced with all of this stuff and you just want a place to hang out and talk to other people who do this stuff, come and hang out. Come and join us at the community. Completely free. Lots of really awesome people there having lots of really great discussions. So I look forward to seeing you there. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping make all of this possible. You guys are amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.